Just as you become what you think about all day long, so too do your relationships become what you think about. Your life and all of the relationships within it are all purposeful. Generally speaking, the quality of our lives is pretty much related to the quality of our relationship to the people in our lives. And, to add a piece to the equation, our relationships reflect how we relate to ourselves. That's right, to ourselves. When you cultivate the awareness of your body, mind, and soul as one, and experience unity within yourself, you are then ready to share this sense of wholeness and holiness with others. And this is where your relationships come in. When you have love for yourself, that is what you have to give away. What is inside you gets there by way of your thoughts. If you harbor hate, hate is what you give away. If you harbor self-contempt, contempt is what you give away. If you harbor love and compassion, love and compassion is what you give away. Your relationships travel the same course you do. If you learn through suffering and questioning why things were not working out, as I discussed earlier, then your relationships also suffered. If you followed the path of outcomes and began to see that there were lessons to learn in life, then your relationships also reflected this pattern. And if you've gone to purpose and have your life on purpose, your relationships will also reflect this position in your life. Remember, purpose is about giving. Let's take a look at the core ingredient of a relationship that is on purpose and then examine some specific methods for getting there. At the center of a purposeful relationship is love. But it is more than simply being able to say the words, I love you. For the words are used by people who also berate and harm each other on a daily basis. Love is giving, and it has nothing to do with what you receive. This ingredient of love at the level of giving is how purpose is defined, and it is the ultimate in creating miraculous relationships. If you have love inside of you, that is all that you will have available to give away. You begin to see the fullness of God in everyone you encounter, and the level of your relationships to others takes on the glow of real magic. You see your children and all children, not in terms of what they are doing or how they're behaving or misbehaving, but beyond to the invisible part of them, the soul that is in that young body. You meet that soul with love and radiate it outward to them, and they will in turn respond with love. You have loving relationships with others because you bring love, rather than because you seek it from others. Members of your family with whom you have had a difficult time relating are no longer the source of your disdain. Your anger and negativity is gone, replaced by non-judgmental love. This does not require long years of therapy or the assistance of support groups or drugs or special herbs. It requires only that you shift to being a spiritual being first and a physical being second. Your friendships and business relationships can also improve dramatically with this new giving approach. When a conflict arises, you suspend your negative thoughts and instead send out love. When you respond in an unthreatened manner and instead communicate an inner knowing in a peaceful, loving way, you are incapable of being rattled by challenges. You have created a miracle in that relationship. I can remember as a college professor having some gigantic disagreements with my colleagues. They were what we call difficult people to get along with unless you shared their point of view, which very few people did. I discovered I was always able to get my way with these impossible colleagues. I was experiencing real magic where others were experiencing exasperation. The secret? Send them love and ask nothing of them. The colleagues always came around and found it impossible to be nasty or confrontational with me. I simply sent them the love I had inside and then surrendered. This approach to relationships is basically my approach to life. Stay on purpose. Know that you're here to serve. Get off of having to prove yourself, remove your ego from the encounter, and send out love. Giving love with no expectations is the cornerstone of your relationship when you are on purpose. There really is very little else that you need to know. Practice this giving of love without conditions, and you'll find yourself feeling full rather than empty, and blissful rather than miserable. Here are four ancillary qualities that go into this real magic in your relationships. One. Relinquish your need to be right. This is the single greatest cause of difficulties and deterioration in relationships, the need to make the other person wrong or to make yourself right. The spiritual partnership is a relationship of equals. No one needs to be proven wrong. Each person has the right to their own point of view. A simple reminder goes like this. I know how I feel about this, and it doesn't match how she feels. But so what? It is enough that I know it in my mind. I have no need to make her feel wrong. Then stifle yourself, and you have created a miracle right there. 
you have replaced a potential conflict with a loving response. Practice this, and you will see love replacing anger between you. This is also true in your relationships to all others. Your children need to be guided, not to be made wrong. The embarrassment that goes with being proven stupid leads to a self-image of stupidity. You can replace those statements designed to prove how superior you are with loving responses designed to help your children and others examine their own point of view. This can be applied in business, with strangers that you meet, in disputes with your neighbors, in virtually all human relationships. 2. Allow space. Let there be space in your togetherness. When you love someone for what they are, rather than what you think they should be, or for how they please you, then allowing for privacy and space comes automatically. The clinging relationships racked with jealousy and fear come from individuals who believe they have a right to dictate what the other person ought to be. Rather than regarding the need of your partner to have alone time as a threat, see it as a time for renewal that you celebrate. Make every effort to help each other have that space. The irony is, the more space you allow and encourage within the relationship, the more the relationship will flourish. 3. Eliminate the idea of ownership. Seek to enjoy each other, not to possess each other. No one wants to feel owned. No one wants to feel like a possession. No one wants to be dominated or controlled. We all show up here with a purpose, and that purpose gets thwarted when any human being attempts to interfere with our heroic mission. Ownership is the greatest inhibitor to feeling a sense of purpose and mission in one's life. You don't have the right to tell the people with whom you are in a relationship what they ought to be doing while they're here on earth. That is only between each person and their soul. You may succeed in imprisoning another, and you may have a marriage that lasts for 60 years, but you do not have a loving relationship if either partner feels owned or like a possession. This is the lesson I had to learn the hard way. It cost me dearly. A painful divorce and many unpleasant hours in hostile conflict. Today, I can't even conceive of the idea that I could own my wife. She is her own person, and my own relationship to her is based upon acknowledging that in her. It is indeed reciprocal. It came about through giving, not demanding, through respect, not criticism. Number four, you do not have to understand. What a great lesson this is in learning how to make all relationships work at a magical level. You simply do not have to understand why someone else would want to do and think the way they do. The fact that you are willing to say, I do not understand, and that is fine, is the greatest understanding you could exhibit. You are together not to understand each other, but to aid each other in living a life at purpose. These are the qualities that make for a purposeful relationship. They all orbit around the planet of unconditional love. Get to this place and you will begin to see results in all of your relationships.